obviously we were going to be talking about as something that we all are experiencing. We have Diraj Gupta, the co-founder and CTO of Enfilterit, and we'll be talking about how to protect your media by your spend from bots. All the digital advertisers out there, we stay with you. Uh, Diraj, tell us a bit more. What's happening out there? We, we all are interacting with bots every day in our lives. Uh, we use voice bots, chat bots every day to make our lives convenient. And we all realize that bots have come a long way uh, from where they were earlier. They're, they're smarter, they're more sophisticated, they're more advanced. Uh, but, but truth be told, uh, a lot of times when we're spending money to acquire customers, we have, uh, you be, may be a telco, you might be a, a content provider, you run a lot of digital campaigns to promote yourself, to get customers, to get subscriptions. Uh, the same bots can come and eat up your budgets. They can come and click on your ads. They can come and install your ads. They can come and uh, uh, create logins, Buddhist logins, uh, which means that you actually end up burning a lot of money on digital marketing, which is going and getting eaten away by bots. The same bots which in many cases we feel are, are good and are part of our lives, uh, actually eat up the budgets. Uh, uh, for a lot of clients, we've seen 20 to 20% 20 of their media budgets being wasted on bots. That's just machines looking at your ads, looking at your content. It's not going to help you. It's not going to help you get any subscriptions. It's not going to help you in, in growing your business. And it's just money down the drain. Uh, especially in these times uh, where recession is hitting in a lot of customers, digital marketing budgets are getting impacted for a lot of clients. Efficiency and making sure that you are not wasting your money or dollars on bots is a key aspect for everyone. Uh, and that's that's what we're, we're talking about. That's what Infiltrate does as a service. Well, I was taking some notes and help me my mental math here. Yeah. You say that 20 to 30 percent of an advertising, digital advertising budget out there might be going through bots, or might be actually not reaching any real customer. So that's based on the 600 billion rough estimations of the market. 120 to 180 billion wasted, Absolutely. and the 120 to 180 billion that we pay as consumers in the end, because that's the inviolable cost of our services. I'll, I'll talk about a very interesting case way back in time. Okay. In 2016, there was a bot which was hitting YouTube, Google YouTube. Yeah. A lot of us spend money on YouTube for running our campaigns. Uh, this bot was identified to be making $5 million per day as a bot, which was just going, watching videos, seeing ads on top of those videos, and just earning money out of advertisers. Uh, this was called the MethBot. And the myth board was done somewhere in Russia, but it was eating away budgets throughout the world. Just to give you a size of the scale of that operation, at one point, the myth board was estimated to have more IP addresses than Facebook controlled globally. Imagine the number of customers Facebook had and the amount of IP addresses its servers would have. Myth board controlled more IP addresses than Facebook, and that was the size of operations. Interestingly, no one got caught. No one has gone to jail, even after that was detected. Uh, and the only thing which happened was that some of the patterns which identified the MedBot were started to get blocked out by Google and others. And now, though they probably just tweaked their some of their parameters and they're still running. That's the size, and this is way back in 2016. Now imagine how bots have become smarter and sophisticated now. And that's the size of the problem we're talking about. Well, because it's interesting that the nomenclature bots today is it AI tomorrow, how powerful is it going to be? Um, you are scaring me a bit, both as a consumer and even the mobile ecosystem forum, you know, we have an advertising budget. I'm scared because I don't always know how that budget digital is going to be used now. Uh, are we going to see a bit more of a positive news coming out? Well? Of course. Look. Uh, in the good old days when you did a billboard, right? Yeah. You could go and audit, you could say, hey, my billboard is supposed to be there on this highway. I, I had paid for 500 billboards, am I getting 500 billboards, right? You could do that. Digitally, 
which ad you see and what ad I see could be very different, which means that it is not possible to audit it manually. You need technology in place to identify what was served, and that's something which is completely trackable and validatable. That's the whole merit of digital marketing. Unlike television or print, where you just have to assume numbers, digital allows you to measure and monitor. And that's the good news, which means that uh, independent bodies like Enfilter It can help you in making sure that your budgets are being spent where they're supposed to be, are not going wasted on words. And we actually are able to go into, for example, Google, into Facebook, into programmatic channels, into uh, affiliate networks, and block out bad traffic at source so that your campaigns are protected. You don't have to worry about all the technology behind that. You have to worry about creative, you have to worry about how to make your campaign viral. You focus on how to get your growth for your brand. And we will make sure that we keep it clean. I think that's that's the point. Uh, of course, you can you can use a lot of simple things to make sure your campaigns are, are nice and clean uh, and, and protected. But yes, uh, making sure that you're aware about the problem and you're trying to do something to solve it is the first step in in, in working towards the solution. Uh, so, just like we learned how to deal with viruses, I'm, I'm trying to do a comparison. Yeah. We had to learn that, oh, something bad is out there. I need to protect myself. Uh, you say that we need to have that kind of a IG perspective of, of advertising metrics. Of, of course, you need an antivirus. You need an antivirus for your digital marketing. Otherwise, you will keep getting shocked and surprised. Weird things will happen. Let me give you an example of, of a very common phenomenon. A lot of brands spend on Google search. It's one of the first places you go to run your ads. There are competition which are subscribing to services which will run a bot, which will eat up your Google search budget so that their ads rank higher. Okay, so, so suppose someone is searching for meth, right? Obviously you will rank on top, right? But if I was to run a bot to exhaust your budget, you would no longer be present on top because your budget for the day is exhausted. While me, if I was a competitor, would start ranking on top and without any competition. So it would be cheaper for me as your competitor to get you out of the game every day after a few hours and get the top ranking, which will come up with its own business volumes and revenue for me because you will not be found. So, so they are getting our top ranking and making you pay as a competitor for it. An unfair competition as, as it best does. So. Yeah. Um, so I'm, then, I'm getting interested as, as, as it makes itself now. So what do I do if I am an advertiser or a brand? Do I do it myself? Do I hope somebody does it for me? How does it work? So, so if you can do a lot of data analytics yourself, you can evaluate impressions, you can go through logs, you can, you can scan through data. You can definitely do that yourself. Uh, it's just by looking at data, you'll be able to see obvious anom anomalies, and you should be able to solve for those, right? Uh, but yes, if if you're you're more interested in making sure you're just keeping your campaigns running, you're making them viral, you're putting the right creativity, and you want to make sure your brand is visible, then you can leave the heavy lifting to tools like ours, uh, which can solve for you. And yes, uh, we are able to make sure that by blocking back traffic in your campaigns, that 20% comes back to you into your campaigns. You actually get better performance, you get lower costs, you get better conversion rates. And that's the whole point of running a digital campaign, right? Better performance, so that you can get better ROI for every dollar you spend for your company. Well, you know, the averages sometimes can be misleading. That 20% uh, is 20% of a small budget or of a big budget. We just heard before about content now, digital services like content, their acquisition cost is purely a digital advertising cost. But does, does it make sense for them to start? Are they going to be the first one to look at it? Are you working with some of that? Content players, we have plenty, so maybe yeah. Of course, we, we work with a lot of content players. Um, for example, uh, Prime Video uh, globally works with us. Every time you take a Prime Video app or you to take a subscription, we are actually sitting behind validating if you are a human or a bot, and making sure that that uh, that you are actually the, the person which is intended for the digital marketing activity. Um, digitally first brands who spend most of their budgets on digital marketing obviously are the ones who 
have always been most interested in this because the bulk of their budget goes into this marketing. Uh, but yes, now more and more traditional brands, which earlier used to be more TV focused or print focused, are now coming in with digital marketing. And they suddenly realize that the teams don't have the expertise to understand how digital campaign is supposed to be run. And in that case, they again need a lot of protection. Uh, in fact, let's let's focus maybe on telcos because we are in a telco uh, conference, right? Uh, what about direct carrier billing? Uh, a lot of telcos are a, of course, running ads to promote their SIM cards, their subscriptions. We saw the previous presentation about you know the super bundling, absolutely, and there are all savings to be there made there. But what about they acting uh, on on the pipeline of accepting payments where? Uh, direct carry billing fraud is a major issue for a lot of subscription plans for telecom operators. Uh, and uh, fraud percentages of 70-80% are not, not unheard of, very common actually. So 70-80%? 70-80%. Absolutely. That's the, that's the size of the fraud in, uh, in a lot of uh, direct carry billing activities and content activations. Uh, of course, those are exceptions and there will always be bad people and good people. And uh, you have to make sure that you have protection in place to keep the bad people out and incentivize the good people to keep running and scaling up. That's how you would make sure that your offering on the table is good and is, is scaling up. Uh, and that's, that's what is, is important for a telco. So telco actually can benefit from both sides. One is their own digital marketing budgets to get SIM card subscriptions, to get leads, uh, subscription plans, etc. enabled. Uh, the brand campaigns protected, and also on the DCP side, where they're actually part of the whole content ecosystem, they're the final leg of the content ecosystem where as the content is getting activated, they're the ones responsible for doing the reductions on the subscribers' bills, and they itself making sure that they're not bots or, or spoofing, spoofed content or traffic which is coming in to do the activations is a key part of what Telco would, would need to do. So. You mentioned one of your customer before, uh, Prime Video from Amazon. There might be others, so maybe. Give us an idea how much of the content providers, telcos, shopping retailers are covered today? Are we talking about the majority is doing something? Are we talking about 10%, 1%? What's happening? How many people are actively doing this? So that's, that's the scary part. A lot of advertisers feel, you know, like. Bots, no, they can't be coming on my campaign, right? We all deal with bots in our real life, but suddenly we feel that our campaigns may be having some super strength to keep bots away. But unfortunately, that's, that's just a myth, that's just you know, something which you assume. Uh, that's not reality. Reality is bots are everywhere. I quote one number which is probably going to surprise all of you. Please search on like this. There's been a lot of reports by Cisco, by, by different IT security companies which have said, that there are more bot traffic on the internet than humans. Machines have taken over. There are, there are more bot traffic on the internet browsing websites than there are humans as of now this year. Which means that more likely than not, you're actually having bots in a majority than human traffic. In fact, what this article did was it classified bots into two sections, good bots and bad bots. What are good bots? Good bots are good bots which politely declare themselves as bots. They say, hey, I'm a bot and I'm visiting your website. So why would someone do that? For example, the Google search bot. Google search bot comes on your website, scans your website, analyzes it for content so that you can rank higher on the search engine. Now that's a good bot. You want that bot on your website because that's how your website will go on top. But then there are bad bots which will obviously not come in as politely and they will, they will try and hide behind consumers. Uh, bad bots form 30% of almost every website's traffic. Mr. Elon Musk did a great job talking about it on Twitter. His estimate of Twitter at the size of Twitter with millions of subscribers was north of 20%. As per him, 20% plus accounts on Twitter were, were bot accounts. So all of this is information which is out there, which is already there, and, and big names like Elon Musk have have talked about it for their own company. Um, and, and by the way, before Elon Musk came in, guess what was the percentage of bots which Twitter claimed? 2%. So before Elon Musk came in, Twitter said, hey, I'm clean, I just have 2%. And you know, that's also a minuscule percentage. And the moment he came in and everyone realized it is 
definitely not 2%, it is 20%. And we all see that. The moment we see a new movie launch, we suddenly see its trailer having million views, 100 million views overnight. And you know, this doesn't make sense. It's a shitty movie, it's a shitty video, right? Uh, but on YouTube, suddenly it has 100 million likes. It's bots. Oh, wow. Uh, sorry, I'm a bit of a bad timekeeper. Our time is up, and I didn't ask for any questions. But I was having too much fun. Good thing is, we're going to have a little break, so maybe we can ask more. But this conversation cannot stop here. We will have to talk about it much more. Our life, our business is impacted by this. The future of our industry, well, it's got lots of advancement, some scary things. Luckily, some solutions are better. Uh, the Arch, from uh, M53. Thank, thank you very you much, Friday. Thank, thank you for talking to us, and we'll come back to you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much.